right, it's loud and know it's the middle of the day and police and ambulance keep running. <laughs> but y'all, you know, my hair is blowing, my hair gets blown. But we're at, we're at the marker on Route 1 in um, Stafford, Virginia. Calito of Mary Kitamakum. She was the daughter of one of the Tayaks of the Piscataway. And Piscataway were in um, Southern Maryland in the area around Clifton and uh, Echo Key and that area over there. So, but uh, I think this is backwards, but this is her sign. I'm gonna flip it around if I can so you can read it. But it's right here on Route 1. Uh, what is that? Forest and Crossing and across from the Wawa, whatever. So if you're in the area, you can see it. Let me flip it around so you can read it. All right, I hope y'all can hear me because it's loud. Like I said, it's ambulance and police. Something happened, something went down over here. But, um,. So I'll read it for you guys. Mary Kitamakon. Uh, Mary was the only child of Kitamakon, who was a paramount chief of the Piscataway tribes when Lord Baltimore's settlers arrived in Maryland in 1634. In 1641, seven-year-old Mary came, became the ward of Maryland's governor, Leonard Calvert, and his sister-in-law, Mary Brent. Three years later, Mary was married to Margaret Brent's 38-year-old brother. Yes, 38. It's old R. Kelly. <laughs> Giles Brent, who likely intended to gain control of Piscataway lands through the alliance. The Brents moved to Virginia to lands near here in 1647, where Giles and Mary had at least three children. Giles Brent remarried in 1654, but there is no record of Mary's death. So R. Kelly Ben. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, G Giles Brent, I think they're like, um, they're like Scottish or something, pale. But, like I said, Wild Wilds across the street. So if you guys are driving down Route 1, you'll be able to see it. And I think I'm like right in front of the post office. But, yeah, so they've been doing this kind of thing, trying to um, marry the women to steal the land. And she was like 10 years old when she got married to like a 38 year old. Like they go to all types of lengths. So this guy, he had some, Giles had some mess with him and he was, he, he did a lot of stuff to screw people over in the Maryland province. And eventually some guy took, uh, enslaved him and took him back to London. I don't know what happened then, but eventually he came back some time later. And then when he came back, that's when Mary died. And she's buried here at the Brent Family Cemetery. But when I look, um, look it up on the map, and I drove to it on the way down here, it's just like woods and stuff. It's like not, let me move away from the road so you can hear me. It's like woods, it's not like a real, um, maybe I got the wrong address, but what they have on the internet, I'll try to uh, look around, but what they have on the internet is like um, some woods, it, it doesn't show up. So I thought that was really strange. So they're trying to steal my land now. They've been stealing the land, that's what I'm saying. Like her father was the paramount chief, that's like, what Chief Powerton was like, he was the paramount chief, and he had that. Um, he did have alliance with Powerton. I mean, his family did. He's too too young to be to have lived then. But um, yeah, so um, if if you guys go back to that video that I produced for Bakshira Smooth, um, you will see the picture of the. The Indian, he has like uh, dreadlocks and it's like twisted up in a bun. And he's bowing down to the priest and he's being baptized. That's, that's her father. 
So they basically made that to humiliate him. And after he did that, after he converted, and he basically gave over his paramount chiefdom to the Europeans, he was killed mysteriously. And then mysteriously, his daughter ends up in the custody of these people, the governor. So you see they doing some tricks. They slick with the tricks. All right, greetings, Shakir. Yeah, so y'all got any questions? I mean, I've been looking for this place. I can't find it. I just came out and wanted y'all to see the plaque. And um, I'm going to do some more research on her. Across the street before I get hit. But, um... I'll see if I can still find it while I'm down here. It's not far from me. It's like maybe 20 minutes away from where I am. So it's like I can't come back. Anybody got any questions? Peace. I'm gonna try to get in the car so I can, so it's gonna be less noisy. Y'all keep telling me to go live, and then when I go live, y'all don't have questions. Or y'all be asking questions about other people. Do I know this and that? Please share, share the video out. <clears throat> Is there Nanny Coke language books? Um, I don't believe so, but there's a wonderful wonderful sister on YouTube who I have um, talked to a few times who does Nanny Coat language videos. If you look it up, you'll be able to. I can put the link below after this. So, hold on. When are you going to do a prophecies video? What kind of prophecies are you speaking of? What kind of prophecies? Um, do I think the grave is a site that's unkept? <sighs> um, no, actually, I just read that a couple of different um, local historical societies and groups, and I think one of the churches actually um, upkeep the site, but it's like at the end of a dirt road, and I don't know if it's on private property. Well, I didn't see it, but I could drive back over there now, but I don't know. I want to be sure because I don't want to go on people's property and get shot by some redneck or something. So, I want to be sure that the public can go there or I have to call them um, beforehand and see if I can come see it and show you guys. <clears throat> so, I was trying to get some footage. Yeah, be careful, right? Uh, we out in Stafford County. You know, this is some rednecks out here. Can you recommend any books specifically on the Taino? We're not really talking about tiny Taino right now. We're talking about Piscataway. Hold on, let me um peace. Let me cut my ear on. Jeez, it's hot out here. Um I'm not really sure about any um books on the uh, um Tainos. I'm not an expert on them. Thank you. Specifically, indigenous prophecies in America. Um, I can tell you one of the prophecies. Um, one of the who I was just telling somebody this last week. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't want to sweat my hair. I just got got it done. Um, there was a prophecy that was given to. Uh, Paramount Chief Powerton or Wahan Sanaka. He was given um, the prophecy of basically the invasion. All right, we knew there was going to be an invasion of the Europeans because, uh, and I wanted to go over um, the whole Don Luis story too, but basically, Wahan Sanaka is Don Luis that, that was in the legend. Um, he was taken by the Europeans as a teenager. 
and then he came back and, and assumed the position of a leadership through his mother's line. Um, Piscataway or subject of Powhatan. At the time that the Europeans came, they did, um, they were a paramount chiefdom of their own and they did come under uh, Chief Powhatan. That's how powerful he was. They came under him for protection from the Iroquois tribes because y'all remember it was a great war then and also to protect them from the Europeans. Uh, and the food, okay, did I just skip around? So <laughs> I was trying to answer your question. Uh, star, what was I saying before that? The prophecy. Okay, let me get, um, let me finish that. What I was saying, Piscataway. They did come under the leadership of Chief Powhatan, um, and that was the only time that they were under the Powhatan Confederacy. Okay, <laughs> I answered it. <laughs> yeah, so that's, <sighs> and then back to the prophecy. The prophecy, and I'm sorry if it, I have to have my air on. Y'all know it's, it's hot outside. <laughs> The prophecy was that the Europeans were going to attack us. We will have three wars with them and we will win all of the war and lose the last one and become their slaves. Right? Chief Powhatan, um, him and his brothers kind of argued with this information. Now, Chief Powhatan was in part of the priesthood. His brothers were not. He was given this prophecy through one of the, I guess, oracle or seers of the priesthood, a male. He was given that that prophecy. And it's kind of like the reason why um, things went the way it was because he assumed that the Europeans were going to fight were going to be the Spanish. So when the English showed up, he saw it as an opportunity to gain alliance with them because they had the same weapons as the Spanish and they they thought like them, they fought like them. They've already had wars with them during the Crusades and such. So that's why he made uh, John Smith a chief, which a lot of people do not know that John Smith was a Powhatan chief, as crazy as it sounds. So when John Smith arrived and that whole uh, BS story with Pocahontas saving him. All that stuff was a ritual and Pocahontas wasn't even involved in what happened. So they were doing that ceremony to crown him as a chief. And that's why they were allowed to stay because John Smith was a chief. Now when John Smith got injured and he left without telling everybody, that's when the war started popping off. The first war, the first uh, anglo powerton war, the second and third or whatever. Uh, so Obichenka No, who was a chief of um, the Manskin, another uh, Pamunkey tribe, which was the brother of Powhatan, when he heard of the prophecy, he uh, believed it, but he believed that we could defeat them. And that's why he fought till the death. He was like basically to the point of a wheelchair, but we didn't have wheelchairs, but the point of they had to carry him into battle. That's how hard he fought the Europeans. And they eventually captured him and shot him in the back of the head in jail, which was like a cop out. Like it was very disrespectful. Um, but you can see how the two brothers and the other brother, he was more passive. Uh, Opichapin. He was more patch, passive than both both of them. He just didn't, you know, he wanted them to do whatever it took to keep the peace with the Europeans and keep them from coming here. Now, Powhatan was laid back with them because, like I said, he wanted to make an alliance. And because John Smith was so cool, I mean, we kind of give John Smith a bad name. He was not, like, wanted, he was not, his intentions was not uh, to dominate or to enslave and things like that. He was just some kind of bachelor dude. I would say like, um, what's his name? Like he was like a Lance Solo, like before 
did I say Lance Solo? Han Solo. <laughs> like Han Solo. <laughs> Who is Lance Solo? He was like Han Solo on uh, Star Wars. Like he, that was like him. Like that character seems like it's based on John Smith. And John Smith was a former slave. He was from, um, just like Han Solo, former slave from the pot, from an uh, impoverished family who came up through the military and became who he was. So basically Han Solo is, is based on John Smith and John Smith was a perpetual bachelor, which was very odd at the time. He was never married. He just slept with a bunch of women or whatever. He never slept with Pocahontas. He was not a pedophile. They never had, he was more like an uncle to uh, Pocahontas because he was one of the chiefs. So there's a lot of stuff that's misinformed about John Smith. So. He was a big part of helping the tribes here maintain their independence from the crown. And once John Smith left, that's when the governor and all those people came in. And it's a funny story about how they tried to have uh, Chief Powhatan bow down to the crown and he refused to bow because they were going to crown him with a, like a European crown made of gold or I think that's what the story is I'm not sure so I'm, I'm just going off the top right now but he refused to bow down to put the crown on him so I think one of the guys had to step on something and put it on his head or whatever so they were trying to make some type of treaty that way and he refused to bow to them because that's how big he was like his territory is bigger than their territory to be honest the, the Powhatan Confederacy lands or country, uh, Ajacom or, or um, Senecomico, whichever one you want to call it, was bigger than England and their, their little territory they had. So, um, let me read some of your questions. I surveyed the island of Port Royal Sound and I feel my ancestors' bones are on Skull Creek resistance oh okay yeah, Halito. any books on the Piscataway Taya um, I do not know personally of any books on them um, I just been researching like um, basically now off the internet is a couple stories off the genealogy sites of Mary Kitta McCone's descendants and she has an interesting DNA background because when they do the DNA of these people who claim to be her descendants, it is mostly comes up European and so-called African-American DNA, which tells you right there what she was. And they don't, they have a very, very small percent of quote unquote Native American DNA. So their DNA is showing up African-American and European mostly. So that's that's telling you something now with with what they're labeling as African American DNA. Right? Let's see if I can see your question. I think I missed something. Have you done any videos on Chickahominy? They never joined the Powhatan Alliance. My cams from Charles City. Um Chickahominy, they were they were not Powhatan, but they did join the Alliance at a certain point for protection. It was kind of like um, touch and go with them. It's not like they wanted to be under anyone, but uh, Powhatan had so much power that when the Europeans came, they had to go under some type of umbrella. Let's see what else you guys are talking about. Y'all saying wow? What were y'all saying wow about the prophecy? Yeah, the prophecy said we was gonna be enslaved by the white man, and and look what happened. Only a few, ooh, only a few of us were not enslaved, and that's mainly because we descend from the the priesthood. We descend from the wolf clan, the seers. So all those people, all the priesthood and the, the wolf clan and people like that, they had to go underground and either they left the area or they hid under the Mattapanai tribe. 
right? And some people became Christians as well to protect themselves and just joined into the to society as free people of color. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you. I'll try to keep up the work. So yeah, I've just been doing research on her for probably about a year now. And hopefully I'll be able to come up with a video just here and there. Nothing really intense. Um, that's why I wanted to come out here actually see the gravesite. I went to um, St. Mary's Church in um, Clifton or Akakee, whichever. Clifton or Akakee, Maryland, whichever one you want to list. Um, that is the church where I said her father, I think his name is uh, Chido Mech, Chido Mecco the Tayak of the, um, his got away. So he was, um, that's where he basically converted to Christianity and um, bowed down to the crown. Now he actually bowed down, unlike Powerton. He got on his knees and bowed down and was crowned and became a tributary to the Europeans. And after that, uh, they killed him and took all his land. And I, somehow his daughter, and like I said, Mary Kitta McCoon, his daughter, somehow she ended up being um, adopted by Governor Calvert and his sister-in-law, Mary Brent. And then she married, then, the, and then Mary Kitta McCoon married Mary Brent's brother, who was 38 years old. She was 10 years old. So I don't know if it was Mary Brent didn't want to take care of her anymore and or her brother Giles Brent came up with some crazy scheme to steal land. I don't know what happened, but eventually um, she she died. Like they moved from Maryland down here to Akaki. I mean Akaki. <laughs> I mean they moved from Akaki to Aquia or Akia. We, it's really pronounced like Akia, but the Europeans call it Aquia, Virginia. And that's where she's buried. So, you guys got any more questions? Um, Nanko, what? Nanko tape would be good to do. Stay on. Okay, I'll see if I can look into them. Just like you said, it seems this is Aaron. It seems like everybody in the tribe now is half white or mostly white and all the people of color that's from the area are now African-American. Yes, that's true. If you go to King William and all that area, Caroline County, uh, all the people are African-American now. And it, it was a lot of people used to be free people of color. So with that whole thing, the people on the reservation, a lot of them are very mixed. Um, there are no quote unquote $5 Indians in those tribes. All those people are mixed with the original people. Um, so what happened in the late 1800s, early 1900s, um, well, probably mid 1800s, like right around this time, um, before the, the Nat Turner rebellion right around that yeah it had to be before because that's when my ancestor left the well, she was kind of banished from the reservation um what they were doing was like i said some of the people had became free people of color they became christians they had gained uh land grants from the land that they the family had already owned anyways so that what they were doing was they're getting land grants because the europeans were cutting into the reservation land so the people were making sure that the, the indigenous people still had their land, but it was through families. So what the Europeans did is they tried to regulate the reservations and told people that if you want to be considered uh, a Pahatcha Indian or whatever, you will have to sell your land and your property to live on the reservation and be considered a part of the tribe. If you do not do that, 
then you're going to be a colored person. So a lot of our ancestors, you can look on the tax records for those counties and you will see their names. And it's the same names as the people on the reservations. And some people are under Indian Town, like I have ancestors under Indian Town on the tax records. So what they wanted to do was tax the people. It, it was a catch 20. So basically, if you wanted to stay Indian, you would lose everything in which you wouldn't be taxed. But if you wanted to keep all your property and live a good life for your family so you can eat and do everything properly, then you will have to be taxed extra money because the free people of color had higher taxes on them than um, free whites or whatever. So people had like large farmlands, large tracts of land. They had, they had uh, horses. Some people had quote unquote slaves or, or workers, employees or whatever. Those people decided to leave the reservation. <laughs> I was about to say plantation. Uh, eventually, after the Nat Turner Rebellion, more people left, and a group of Power Tens left and moved to New Jersey. So, like a lo very large group. And those people are, uh, some of them intermarried with the Lenape and the Cherokee and the people up there. Um, those people are now African American people. And then they, they've moved to cities like Philadelphia and uh, Trenton and Newark and all those other places. New York City now, of course, too. Do you have any research on the Okanichi Sapani tribe from Fort Christiana and uh, Hecklenburg, Mecklenburg? Um, I know a little bit about Fort Christiana. Now, Fort, Fort Christiana was a major part of the Nat Turner Rebellion, which people don't know. And uh, Norris Turtle Gang, he did something on that a couple of years ago. We had a conversation about it. Um, and he did the he did an interview. I don't know who it was, who he did it, Sonetta or somebody. But he put that information out about Fort Christiana. Um, they were having a war with Europeans at that time, little battles and skirmishes or whatever. And um, they were actually a part of the Nat Turner Rebellion, which they don't tell you. And there was a couple of poor whites who were involved with the murders as well. But they wanted to create a scapegoat and make a witch hunt for our people, basically. So they made it like um, a slave rebellion, this and that. But it was a whole bunch of people because they were very messy out there in Surrey County. I mean, Southampton County. And they were doing a lot of things that people did not agree with business-wise. And, as you know, attacking people and things like that. So a lot of people rebelled. So those indigenous people were a part of the Nat Turner Rebellion. And Fort Christiana has another history. Um, if you guys go back and watch my other video on the, um, on the school, one of the first, the first Indian schools, you would see that that, that was the location of the, one of the first schools, All right? Do I know, know about Lumberton, North Carolina? Um, yes, I know a little bit. I, I have a, a client who has ancestors from there, from the Lumbee and Cherokee tribes. I know a little bit about them. Um, rig for unsuccessful. I'm trying to read these things. Somebody retracted a question. Indian removal. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> y'all laughing. Hey, Patrice. <laughs> Thank you, Macho. Yeah, please do more research. You guys do more research on your own because some of you guys will like see stuff that I'm doing and then you guys go out and find stuff and tell me and it's just like, okay, that's great. Like I didn't, like some things like we overlook. So it's good that we all get out there and research, you know? <laughs> So, yeah, um, it's like a half an hour, so give me some more questions. 
Um, if you guys don't have any more questions, let me get off of here. Yeah, some weird guys like recording me from his phone behind. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Let me see. Most of the tribes here in Oklahoma are white or half breed, and if anyone of color speak about the tribes, it's heavily criticized. Well, y'all know that those, <laughs> that's a whole nother video of getting to the five civilized tribes and people misusing the definition of quote unquote five dollar Indians because that five dollar Indian definition only defy comes from those tribes. Um, but Oklahoma, they have the history of mixing in things and Europeans doing certain things to benefit themselves. A lot of those people know that they are of mixed blood, but it's just like they want to call everyone else uh, mixed blood. So some of the people, if you look at the roles, some of the people on the roles who are listed as full blood are not full, full blood. And then some of the people who are full blood are listed as freemen. So, you say you can't wait to learn the Powhatan language. Yes, I've been working on it. I'm working on the Powhatan class. I think I'm going to have the class and a book so that you guys can like maybe like an ebook or something. I don't know. So that you can have it and have it with you like on your phone or maybe I do a physical book too, something small. And you could just have that little book with you so you can learn it. Some of the stuff is very interesting because you, if, once you study the Powhatan language, I know I'm skipping around today, <laughs> but once you learn the Powhatan language, you will see that a lot of the new um, English words and American English come from the Powhatan language. Yeah, Powhatan, I mean, yeah, Powhatan language is Algonquian. It's a form of Algonquian, which is uh, Tidewater, the Tidewater dialect which is very similar to the Nandi coat, which the Piscataway spoke. A brother on another channel searched his records. His grandfathers are from England and Ireland. They said he's 132nd Cherokee. Is that a joke? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh man, have you done research in Orange County, Culpeper area? Uh, yeah, I had a client down there. I actually went down there and did some research. Um, Oh, well, let me go back to what he was saying about, well, yeah, you know, sometimes that's what I'm saying. The people are mixing up uh, the, they're mixing up nationality and blood and race when being a part of a tribe is not a race. Many people were adopted into the tribe or they married into the tribe, which would make them blood by our definition but not by the new European standards. So that's where stuff gets crazy, right? And gets confused. And so this is 132nd. He might be uh, even less than that, but because the person was a part of the tribe and they were maybe a full Caucasian, uh, he got a little bit more blood put on there. But yeah, Orange County, uh, Culpeper area was, they had a large free people color area, which just surprised me. Um, it's close to Fredericksburg, which Fredericksburg was like the popping town for free people of color. Um, and I'm gonna, ooh. No still there? my battery is low y'all but anyways so like I was saying Fredericksburg was like the popping area for free people of color and they had a nice little community there and um, people from that community moved out to Orange County to um, Culpeper County as well um, you said his DNA tests are bogus yeah the DNA tests are bogus like the only thing you can really find are recent ancestors and family um you're not gonna and then they're only searching 0.001 percent you're not gonna find nothing uh what <sighs> i'm not answering that y'all
so yes okay i'm, I'm glad y'all here uh, my battery's low and i just got back i just plugged it in for you guys so okay do you guys got any more questions No, no, no. Okay, Damon. Hey, Damon. I remember last time you spoke about having family from uh, Buckingham, Virginia. What else can you tell me about that area? Well, Buckingham, Virginia, um, they had a little free people color community as well. Uh, out there, Charles City and stuff. All those people are interrelated. Uh, Carter G. Woodson is from out there. I'm a Woodson as well. Um, I think we're related somewhere down the line, not di directly, um, because all those people from Buckingham are related pretty much. Do you know anything about Chief Corn Planter? No, I do not. What'd you say, Lewis? You, how you say, are you cute? We check it for you. Yeah, that guy, he just asked me if I'm single. No, I'm not single right now. Hey, is that rude, guy? You said your tailor moved from London, Bird. So your tailors are from Virginia and they moved to North Carolina? See, a lot of people, when you do your genealogy, you're going to see a lot of people migrating from Virginia because Virginia was um, it was the spot back in the day and um, they kind of handled most of the governmental stuff for even of other colonies and that's why they eventually put um, put the uh, Washington DC in Virginia is basically in Virginia um, why they did that <clears throat> because I have Virginia House of Burgesses and things um, controlled a lot of the area. But uh, the Europeans, that's the place where they came before Ellis Island. They would come to Virginia. And then from Virginia, they'll go to Massachusetts and other places. So, uh, what did you say, Mad? I've researched the colonial backstory on several towns in my state. And the majority of them state the Native Americans settled and gave up their land in the 1700s. Gross misinformation. Exactly. What state are you from? Mad. What state are you from? Yeah, it's a mis. You know, a lot of the lands were just acquired in the 1800s. I mean, why do you think they had to have the Trail of Tears and all these removals and wars? They were warring with the Seminoles. They had about, what, two, three Seminole wars, right? At least two. Um, which they acknowledge and the Yamasee, which is basically the Yamasee Wars. Um, the Iroquois had their little wars after they got screwed over, after they screwed the rest of us over from the Northern Iroquois, so. Brooklyn, you said my four times great grandfather was born in North Carolina but they have him living in Choctaw reservation is that strange uh no it's not strange because what happened was uh thank you a black one thank you for your donation you guys feel free to donate so I can get gas to go to all these places I'm driving around anyways I'm gonna keep going to more places regardless you guys but um so with that the person moving to the reservation they could have moved to north carolina for work there was turpentine um mills that a lot of indigenous people worked on and other little type of um industrial because uh, north carolina had a lot of industrial things going on there um and then once that reservation was established or once they start putting out the rolls and things like that people wanted to be a part of their tribe again because they're getting land allotments. So that could be the case of how they ended up from North Carolina on a Choctaw reservation. Oh, it's Ray. Yeah, girl, we gotta go. We're gonna, we're gonna have to go meet 
finally meet at the Library of Congress. I know that Metro is crazy that time you try to come up there. Uh, genealogy shows chief corn planter a mixed Indian is related to George Bush and his family. Well, I don't, you know, that's interesting because the, a lot of those people mixed in, they probably married one of his daughters or something. You know? Do you know any website with information on the Cherokees of West Virginia and Virginia? Yeah, the Cherokees uh, of Virginia actually have their own website. If you Google it, you should be able to find it. Just search Cherokees of Virginia. Cherokee tribe of Virginia. They only seem to discuss the so-called five civilized tribes. Right? Because the five civilized tribes have so much written on them. Or uh, the Manahawk Indians, were they located? in Orange County. Yes, they were all located there as well as um, Powhatan Indians were there too. Um, hey, Shanti. I know you're from IG. You said, hi, Tasha. Are there any organizations in Virginia for the descendants of the original tribes, especially those who the federal government won't recognize? No, actually, there are not, but that's something interesting that could, you know, something that we could do. Um, it would be interesting. I know the Accomac, uh, they're trying to reorganize their tribe and they're having certain events. Uh, I'm supposed to be speaking at one of their events, I believe, in October. I'll keep you guys posted or whatever. And uh, a couple of other people are going to be there Gay Bridge and I think Carrie Davis and some other people are supposed to be at that event. Um, I had no idea who was going to be at the event, but she, uh, I'm not sure if she's a chief of the Akamak or one of the members or the tribal council. Uh, she does a lot for them. So I, she asked me if I would come down and it's in Virginia. So I was supposed to come to something else. But yeah, I'll keep you guys posted, Patricia. Oh, thank you. You said I'd be a perfect leader for it. Yeah, we should totally start one. Like, for like, one for all not just in virginia for you know all ori um originees or aboriginals aborigines who are not connected to federally recognized tribes why would anyone want to be part of a nation with a complete fraud as chief it's ridiculous talk about identity what who is this nation i don't know what nation is that is and it's all um it's all your pers pers uh, perspective on who's a fraud or not. Yeah, you have to go. It's, Virginia has a lot of stuff. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to go to some other places this summer and um, check them out for you guys. Yes, we dig in the rumble. Right, right. Yeah, and I really I haven't even dug into the Cherokee history of Virginia yet. Really. Um, I'm going to get back to the other part of the Mingos for you guys, and um, it's involving Northern Virginia. I found some local stuff from around here, which is, was kind of shocking to see what what they were up to with the Europeans. So, uh, so hopefully soon I'm going to get that done. It's just been crazy with editing. Like, I can get on here now and talk to you guys, but when I got to get the actual sources and the do all the edit really the editing because i can get on here and talk and whatever record it um but really getting the evidence and putting it on the actual tracks and putting the video together i just need to find an editor or something so that's the only thing that's been stopping me from putting a lot of videos out that's where i'm stuck i'm only what um, please, you guys, let me know if you want me to start doing some more genealogy videos. Um, I had some issues with my genealogy class, but I'm going to get back to it. And those are people who already signed up. Um, I'm going to let them get a fr another free class because it's been so many different, um, so many issues with my school. So I had like a partnership that didn't go like it's supposed to. And, you know, I just got to go back and fix everything so I do apologize to everyone who who has signed up for the class thank you Harry oh hey Harry Mingo yeah Harry I might go to DC and check out the um, Anacostia and see that history there too if you and your wife want to come out how should we sign up for that 
Um, for the genealogy class, I'm, I'll put the link on the, uh, below after we get off air. Yeah, I'm going to do another genealogy. I, I put a couple of videos up for you guys, but um, I'm going to record some more for the class, and then I'm going to put some up so you guys can um, get a preview. Yeah, so I just have so many different technical and uh, difficulties and things. So we'll see how that goes. And I might have some other people on the channel soon. So some interviews, I guess. I'm supposed to be interviewing Johnny Aborigine soon. So... So I, I think I might do a post so y'all can put some questions. Well, I'll just let y'all know when we do it and then you can go, come and ask him questions. Brandon, you said I haven't forgot about emailing you. Yeah, please email me. You said Johnny that dude. Yes, he is. Yep. <laughs> so what up? Hey, Orlando. Most of my mother's peoples are in South Carolina. He said South Carolina and Georgia and Florida. And also South Carolina. You mean North Carolina? Also South Carolina? <laughs> well, you know, there's, um, you're in D.C. area, so you can just go to the archives and to the Library of Congress and get some of that information instead of going to those states if possible the archives will have some of the information not everything because all the records aren't digitalized or shared yet so that's the issue that they're the only issue they're really having with genealogy now is um getting up to date and they don't have enough volunteers and it's very hard work for the interns so usually in the summer the interns put in work and by the fall we'll have like extra stuff like if you go back and search your AccountAncestry.com. Yeah, Ancestry is a good site to use. Uh, it's not perfect, but yeah, it, but like I was saying, in the fall, that's usually when they're like dumping a whole bunch of documents in there because the interns work through the summer and um, they digitalize things. Yeah. So. So you never knew that yeah yeah the archives they do that especially um library congress they have like a database thing too where they have i think they have workers not just interns but um they usually get government interns just like every government um facility does during the summer you can do interns all right well i'm about to go you guys i've been on here about 48 minutes you got more questions can you retrieve town data from churches, correct? Yes, the churches have some data. Um, yeah, family search is good too. But the churches have data, but for, if you're really looking for the hardcore stuff, I will contact your local historical society for that ancestor. Yeah, it explains why I don't go on Ancestry for a while because they have to process it. And you know, like on Ancestry, they have the picture of the actual document and then they have to input the data. So you got the interns, they got to take the pic, they got to scan the document and they got to intern, put the data in. And you'll be seeing them change stuff because the document can say Negro on it and they're putting black African American in the thing. So you see that a lot. So, you said you found ancestors and connections with Spots, Spotswood, Spotsylvania. Yeah, Spotsylvania is near Orange County and Culpeper and Fredericksburg. It says his family's from Virginia, but he might not have been from Africa. But he might not have been for Africa. It's just the record. I mean, I don't know if it, it depends on how far back it was. I'm not going to tell you he's from Africa. Um, you might have to look at in the probate records if he was on the plantation or such. Um, there's also court documents because enslaved and free people of color went to court. Some of them um, 
many of them represented, them, the, represented themselves in court as their own lawyers. So, you know, a lot of these fairy tale stories are not real. And people were intelligent just because they were enslaved doesn't mean they couldn't read and uh, know the law. So a lot of slaves, especially in Virginia, especially in North Carolina and um, Pennsylvania and those areas, a lot of those slaves were very intelligent and they they felt like they were treated unjustly. They would go to court. Like if their master was beating them harshly, they could take them to court and things like that. Yeah, it was one case where this guy he was beaten very badly by some other man besides his master and the guy and his master took the guy to court and the guy went to jail for beating them you can't beat somebody else's property or their slave or whatever so they he won that case and i think they sued the guy for money so he had to pay and i think that slave eventually was able to pay for his own freedom i can't I don't know. I'm gonna have to go through these. I should go through some of these court documents for you guys. And um, once I figure out how to use that little camera um, software or whatever to hook up, I'm, I'm gonna do that so I can screenshot it for you guys. All right, so I'm about to sign off. It's about an hour. Um, I've been on here almost, what, 50 minutes. So peace, you guys. Have a great day. I will make the other post so you can ask questions to Johnny and I'll try to get them answered for you. Um, yeah, I can't. I'm, no, I'm just doing another um, genealogy video for all these questions, okay? All right, thank you. Mugapo. And please share the video out. Please like and comment below even after the thing. You know, please make sure you share my videos because they're not getting a lot of share. Like, I get a lot of... Um, organic views which is weird um but a lot of people don't share my stuff but y'all be sharing other people's stuff especially men's stuff with me and everybody else so some of the people getting their information from me but you guys aren't sharing my videos so <laughs> share, please share my videos out all right thank you one god